News Channel 8 presents New Skills for Living with your host, Tom Lavin, a healthy plan for healthy living. Oh, and welcome to New Skills for Living, a show dedicated to healing and wholeness in our community. If you'd like to learn more about the spiritual aspect of recovery from alcohol and drugs and other addictions and compulsions, you'll want to watch our show today. Our guest today is Father Bill Wigmore. Uh, Father Wigmore is the president and chief executive officer of Austin Recovery. He's also an Episcopal priest. Uh, Father Wigmore has been a counselor and administrator in addictions recovery for over 35 years. Um, he's helped thousands of individuals and families find recovery and find a new life for themselves. Uh, Bill and I go back to the mid-70s in Detroit where we, he's my friend and a colleague and a mentor for me and I'm very glad to have him here to talk with us today about, you know, we talk about recovery being biopsychosocial, that it's physical, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual and uh, we're going to focus on the spiritual aspect of recovery today. Uh, Bill, thank you so much for being here. It's a real pleasure to, to be with you and to see you again, Tom, Thanks, Bill. after all these years. Thanks, Thanks for having me. So there's that line in the big book that says the spiritual life is not a theory, we have to live it. Right. Let's start there, Bill. What, what does that mean? It means moving, for me, I think, yeah. it means moving beyond doctrine and dogma uh -huh. to an experience of God in one's life. Uh -huh. uh, the big book also talks about we were catapulted into a fourth dimension of existence. Mm -hmm. That's mystical language. Okay, uh -huh. uh, one writer talks about alcoholics and addicts as misfit mystics, uh -huh. and I think they're really on to something. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. that that uh, in recovery, one one needs to find an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Well, th that's what I've been. Lo I was looking for that. You know, yeah. I started at, you know drinking at 13, 14 years old. You know, I'd go into a bar. I, I'd like. To, I didn't know it. I'd like an altered state of consciousness, please. <laughs> <laughs> and they would give it to me yeah. in in a, in a bottle. Yeah. And, and it did that for me, uh -huh. but then it did things to me as uh -huh. well. Uh -huh. And I think a good solid recovery introduces people to, to ways to find that that feel better than the alcohol mm -hmm. and drugs. Mm -hmm. Good. I like that. So we're going to be spending this show, Bill, looking at different spiritual themes around okay. recovery. Uh, the first one I want to ask you about is surrender. Tell us yeah. about surrender. Well, surrender has a bad reputation, uh -huh. uh, you know, and, and I would say particularly uh, amongst women, uh -huh. uh, who, for whom that can be a real turnoff. Mm -hmm. I don't use the word a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I use the word alignment. Oh, okay. And 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 I watch people uh, uh, shift inside. Surrender. It's like it's like I, I gotta you know uh, give up. Well, no. Mm -hmm. I really have to more so align myself with. Okay. And if I'm doing that properly, then I'm getting in touch with the Spirit. Uh -huh. Now, you want to call that surrender? Yeah, you could, you could look at it that way. Uh, but I think connection nails it a heck of a lot better. Okay. Yeah. Good. What about, what about acceptance? That, that seems to be a key word in recovery. What, what can you share with us about that dynamic and experience of acceptance? You know, it's a, it's a sh you know the, the old serenity prayer mm -hmm. is very big with recovering people. Mm -hmm. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, wisdom to know the difference. There's a second part mm -hmm. to that prayer, mm -hmm. which I think is it's a shame that it's left out. Uh, and it says, taking this sinful world as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. There's pain in this world. I, I, I don't think uh, that's in the American script. Uh -huh. You know, it should be painless. It should, it should not hurt. Immediate gratification. Immediate gratification. Yeah. I want what I want when I want it. Give it to me. Mm -hmm. If I have to wait 10 seconds, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You know? Uh -huh. Well, that's, that's not a good way to live. Mm -hmm. It's not reality. Mm -hmm. um, so acceptance. Um, it's not all about me. Uh, acceptance of... of uh, of the illness is, is one thing, but acceptance of a red light, uh -huh. you know, when, when I am stopped. Uh, can I be at peace with that? Mm -hmm. If I can't, there's something wrong, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, acceptance of death is part of it. Uh, acceptance, uh, the midlife crisis, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which comes, you know, 35, 40, is this all there is? Is this, uh, well, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, maybe that's a good example of acceptance, mm -hmm. but, it, but it kind of is in the sense that I can't deny the reality of age mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and and w as you're describing that, it doesn't seem like acceptance is really passive. It's kind of an active. If it's done right. Uh -huh. We've got yes. about a half a minute here. Okay. Bro. Can you tell us about that being active, active acceptance? Yeah, that, that it's exciting. Uh -huh. That it's exciting. Uh, that, uh, it, see, I think recovery is about shifting the ego from an inflated sense of self to a, uh, a, a more properly aligned sense of self. Great. We want to follow up with that. And so right after this break, we're going to continue with uh, Father Wigmore about these spiritual themes of recovery. Well, and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking about spiritual themes and aspects of recovery. And Bill, let me ask you about the phenomenon of hope mm -hmm. and how important that is to someone in recovery. I think it's one of the, one of the things that happens earliest in recovery that uh, maybe you can't name it uh, exactly that, but uh, you begin to see people uh, doing what you couldn't do. And, and then you begin to see them as human people, flawed like you are. Uh, and, and that then begins to, uh, to, uh, to bring hope to those of us who are feeling hopeless. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I first entered recovery, I mean, that was my feeling. It, it, was, it was the hopelessness of my situation. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I had no hope. Mm -hmm. and, and it was given to me. It was given to me by people. Um, mm -hmm. And they just love you along yes. in the in the process yeah. when you can't love yourself. Yeah. So to go from despair to hope that one can be clean and sober and have have a great life, huh? have a right. good life. Yeah, and I, I'm a big fan of hopelessness, though. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, tell us about that. Well, that uh, uh -huh. that if you don't bring that to the table, uh, then you're not going to be as as interested as desperate as searching, as wanting mm -hmm. that hope. Because when we ended the last segment, we were talking about making a shift away from the self to a new home in, uh, in, in, in a self greater than me. Uh -huh. uh, we, I call that God. I call, I call that my relationship with mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, and I call it my relationship with other people, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the reality. Uh, rather than, you know, do you believe this, do you believe that, do you believe this other thing? Are you living a spiritual life? Mm -hmm. is, is love coming, coming into you and coming out of you? Uh, if so, that's great. If not, why not? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then three other concepts that you often hear from people in recovery are honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about those themes in recovery, Bill? Well, uh, honesty uh, is is really one of the one of the absolute basics. Uh, addicts are liars. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I mean, I lied, I lied when it was easier to tell the truth. <laughs> I just wanted to stay practiced and <laughs> hone my ability there. I got in trouble, and I came from a lying family, mm -hmm. where where that was taught. Um, uh, I was not my my dad was a longshoreman in New York. And he was very ashamed of that. I was not permitted to tell people what my father did, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I got in trouble for it. Yeah, I got in trouble for telling the truth in my family. Yes, you know. Yeah. Uh, so honesty, uh, um, and when the, for many of us, there's a huge hole in our in our in our hearts and in our souls, and and we try to fill that. And if we have to steal to fill that, if uh, you know, if we have to lie, pretend. Uh, so honesty is, is key to beginning the process. Mm -hmm. Open-mindedness, uh, to not have all the answers is, is extremely important. The, uh, the hardest three words an alcoholic or an addict says, I think, is, I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, what freedom comes with that, uh -huh. you know? Because I always thought I had to know. Uh -huh. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know? And I, and I, and, and I, I try that on every. You don't have to know. I don't have to know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow, what freedom! Uh, so to be open, uh, open to to that. Mm -hmm. Willingness is the key. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, to be willing to, uh, to put recovery first, uh, to be willing to do the things that recovery demands, uh, to be willing to take on responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, to grow up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes somebody will call me on the phone and they're telling me that, you know, uh, they're trying this with their son and they've taken his car keys away and they've done, uh, done this to him. How old is the boy? And they'll say, well, he's 48. <laughs> 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 and it's, uh, uh, we got to grow up. So the, the willingness to take the action. And, and uh, Bill, let us, let us pause with that. Okay. And we're going to take a brief break and we'll continue on with these spiritual themes in recovery. Well, and welcome back. We're talking about spiritual themes in recovery. And Bill, as an Episcopal priest, you do a service called the Fellowship of the Prodigal, which yeah. makes me think about a, another theme in recovery, and that's forgiveness. So yeah. can you share with us the importance of that theme in recovery, please? Uh, it's tremendously important. Uh, one of the toughest things I think alcoholics and addicts have to do is, one, is to forgive themselves. Um, and that, that's probably the last one that, that happens, uh, to forgive their family uh, because nobody got the love that each one of us deserves. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't teach people how to, how to father well, how to mother well. Uh, we don't support young people in doing that. So uh, all of us get scarred mm -hmm. uh, in that. And forgiveness is, uh, is, is key to, uh, to a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it goes both ways, forgiving myself and forgiving others. And it's really kind of a letting go thing in that I'm no longer a victim. I'm, I'm an active creator of my life now as an adult man or woman. Is that yeah. the way you see it? Or Yeah. 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 And peop people get stuck mm -hmm. at that, mm -hmm. uh, won't let go yeah. of this. And of course, the opposite of that, the, the resentment that you were alluding to, mm -hmm. I think it's in the big book where it says resentment shuts out the sunlight of the spirit. Right. Kind of like what you were talking about with Frank Buckman. Exactly. At exactly. one time, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course. And he got the equation. You uh, know, uh -huh. To the degree that I'm cut off from them, I'm cut off from God. Uh -huh. Well, that's, that's, that's good theology. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which we don't teach very much. Yeah. You know, we, we teach uh, it's okay to hate, mm -hmm. it's okay to, uh, to wage wars mm -hmm. and, and kill people. And, mm -hmm. uh, or payback or vengeance or. Yeah. Absolutely. And that the forgiveness is a weakness rather than a strength sometimes. Of course, the other part of that then, Bill, is the spiritual concept of making amends to, to people we have harmed. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please? Well, um, yeah, I had to, I, I was raised in an alcoholic home. I, I, was, uh, I was beaten and abused and all of that uh, good stuff. And, uh, and then when, when I got into recovery, they talked to me about uh, making amends to my father. Mm -hmm. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm waiting for the phone to ring yeah. for him to make amends to me. Yeah. And I said, no, no. Mm -hmm. You've got to make amends to him. For what? For your part in that. Mm -hmm. Well, what was my part in that? You know what my part was? Uh, as, as a young boy, I said inside one day, you will never hurt me again. Mm -hmm. And I built a wall of protection mm -hmm. around myself. And you shut your dad out. Huh? I shut him out. Yeah. And I, I needed to do that. I mean, I think, as you know, defense mm -hmm. mechanisms mm -hmm. are there for a reason. Mm -hmm. But when you defend too much, when you defend against that, uh, I kept everybody else out, too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so I had to go and say to him, Dad, I love you. Because mm -hmm. I did. Uh -huh. I did. And it was sad that he could not love me back. Uh, but, you know, as I looked in my family history, I mean, his father didn't teach him how to father. Mm -hmm. And it goes back several generations. Yeah. You know, where the scripture says, you know, the sin will be passed on for, that's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. If we don't learn mm -hmm. how to do this thing, mm -hmm. what we don't uh, trans transcend, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. we transmit, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. Good, good. I like that, Bill. So, of course, another theme that we hear in recovery is the theme of gratitude. And can you share your thoughts with, with, about gratitude with us? Gratitude is very hard for the ego. Mm -hmm. See, the ego, uh, particularly if you're type A, mm -hmm. <laughs> is look what I did, look what mm -hmm. I did. Mm -hmm. 
and, and really, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. Sobriety is a gift. Life is a gift. But we don't come with, with we come, I came, let's take my own inventory, I, can, I didn't ask to be here. I came with a chip on my shoulder, mm -hmm. you know? Uh -huh. Look what you've done to me, God, family, mm -hmm. uh, whomever. Mm -hmm. uh, gratitude was not natural mm -hmm. to me. Uh -huh. uh, and so I have to really, really work on that, that each, uh, that each day is a gift, uh, my sobriety is a gift, life is a gift, this next breath that I'm going to take is a gift, mm -hmm. um, and, and treat it as such, mm -hmm. and thank the giver. Uh -huh. you know? And we call that God, call that life, call that spirit, but get in touch with that, mm -hmm. uh, and then life really changes. Okay. So Bill, here's another one. We have about 30 seconds, and mm -hmm. this theme of self-transcendence, of, of non-self-centeredness, but being trans transcending oneself. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Love, it says in the, in the, in the book of Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, uh, love and service are our code. Mm -hmm. uh, the transcendence, uh, Bill Wilson had a spiritual awakening, uh, which was a hot flash, white light experience, very uncommon. And it may have been the drugs that he was taking that brought that mm -hmm. about. But what does happen, and what I do see over and over uh, with the patients that we work with is, 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 is coming to life again. Okay. And it's a shift that happens inside. So we want to follow up with, with you, Bill, and talk more about that shift right after this brief break. Well, and welcome back as we talk about <coughs> spiritual aspects of recovery. And, and Bill, I think an important thing for us to discuss during this interview now uh, you know, people sometimes hear about treatment centers that really help people, but so many people can't access them because we hear thirty thousand dollars, forty-five thousand dollars. Yes. Um, can you tell us about Austin Recovery and and the fact that it seems accessible to so many people to get the help they need to recover? Yeah, we've got a, a wonderful board of directors who who really take seriously. Uh, the mission of, of helping as many mm -hmm. people as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, what we've attempted to do is to provide affordable treatment for people who can't find it. Mm -hmm. We had a woman several years ago uh, got on a bus from Idaho, you know, and it was like 48 hours to get down there. Yeah. But she found it on the Internet, and it was something that she could afford. Yeah. She had no insurance. And, and oftentimes insurance won't pay uh, the full cost of treatment anyway. So uh, we charge, um, it's $5,500 for 30 days of treatment, yeah. and we have a 90-day program for uh, mm -hmm. folks as well, mm -hmm. which seems to really get the, the very best results. Yeah. And we've got folks coming to us from all over the country. Yeah, I could imagine. I could imagine. They find us on the Internet, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they said, this is what we've really been looking yeah. for. And so then, and I really liked what you said, Bill, that that's part of the mission, because that is a very... Right driving, I think, spiritual aspect of life and living is to have a sense of meaning and purpose and to create something for our fellow man. And, and it seems like that's what your board of directors and the community has done with Austin Recovery is that they want this place to be there right. for those that are hurting and need help. Yeah, we've been there since 1967. Mm -hmm. uh, we started this self-funded program about 10 years ago mm -hmm. and have successfully uh, built it up. Sadly, Texas is 50th among the states in supporting alcohol uh -huh. and uh, drug addiction. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just tremendously needed. Yeah. And then w when you talk about that price and people get residential treatment for 30 days, so that's, mm -hmm. that's room and board and physician, and, uh, physician services right. and group therapy and individual counseling and Complete. all those services to help someone make that change in their life that they need to make if they're going to be clean and sober and right. have a good life themselves and contribute to the community. Right. Huh? And then we have a new halfway house, uh, oh, three-quarter really? way house, actually. We just opened uh, a few days ago. Oh, great. Uh, that'll be $2,500 for uh -huh. a month, and, uh, and people can work then. Yeah. So uh, if you put it all together, we can, we can sometimes keep people for up to a year uh -huh. and really help them change their lives and become the person yeah. that they were meant to be. Yeah. And of course, that also allows you then to individualize treatment based on someone's needs. For some people, I'm sh I would imagine 30 days and then going 
back to their family and work and other if, people 90 right. days or that's right that's uh -huh. right if, if they have a family they have a good support system mm -hmm. uh, a 30 day program yeah. can yeah. can be the the instrument to yeah. turn them around if if they have a history of treatment failure another 30 day program is really not what's indicated yeah you know you're really going to have to go yeah. uh, more in depth yeah i think sometimes frequently we refer to treatment as rehabilitation but for some folks it's habilitation uh, really right. learning to live from the base and from the core of their experience. And, it, and it's nice that Austin Recovery, yeah. uh, because of what a good job you and the board have done financially, makes that available to so many people. Right, and we're doing a new curriculum and our hope is to actually put that online yeah. so that people can come to our website and, and receive it there. If they can't afford treatment, they can get the educational piece yeah. uh, eventually on yeah. our website. It's not yeah. there yet. Yeah. We're w working hopefully with the Meadows yeah. Foundation to make that a reality. Good. And then you have some support services for family members as well, don't you? It's not, it's not our greatest strength. Uh -huh. uh, I grew up in a family systems uh, approach to treatment at some of the facilities I've worked at. Yeah. At, the, at the costs we charge or the prices we charge, uh, we can't give as much family mm -hmm. work as I would love to see. Mm -hmm. but we do do education and we do do family groups uh, once people have gone yeah. through treatment. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Bill, I'm just wondering, you know, in this last 30 seconds, if someone out there is a person suffering with problems with alcohol or drugs or another compulsive disorder, or they're a family member and, and they're in despair, uh, what would you say to them right now, just in about a half a minute? I, I would say that you know, help is there, uh -huh. help is possible, but it's sometimes hard to find. 12-step mm -hmm. uh, groups exist uh, for many, many problems, uh, and, and uh, and it's, it's a way to transform uh, people, but you've got to avail yourself of it. There really is no magic. You know, yeah. recovery is hard work. Uh, recovering from anything, changing is hard, yeah. uh, but, but it's, 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 it's there. Just be willing to do that work. Okay, right. well, it's been great to have uh, Father Bill Wigmore here to share his wisdom and experience, strength, and hope with us. We thank you for joining us. Um, hope that you found this to be helpful for yourself, this theme of addiction and recovery.